Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse here once again. I wanted to do a second video before the live show tonight. Uh, today again, it's still Friday, August 9th, 2017. So uh, we're going to talk about the most important tool that you will have, and we all have this tool already, uh, in an SHTF situation, okay? So we're going to talk about that in just a second. I'll show you the guys over here. Uh, so far today, I have pulled out six eggs today. Uh, three of the juvenile eggs and three adult eggs, because my white birds are still juveniles, my rocks. Uh, they are still juveniles, believe it or not, and they're getting big like crazy. They just started laying, so we get the really small eggs with them. So... Uh, we've already pulled uh, three of my mature birds already laid today. Uh, I know thick neck laid already. And uh, the one, this um, checkers here, she generally lays later in the day. So I, she gives us an egg today or not, we'll find out. But uh, usually the first one in the box in the morning is red. And then uh, oil slick over here, she, she lays on, a, you know. So I usually, between the adult birds, is generally three to four eggs a day with the adult birds because I have four of those. And then my five rocks there, the black and white ones, they uh, just started laying. So today we have so far, and it's still, you know, early, so I will definitely be checking again. Uh, we have, uh, you know, three mature eggs and three uh, juvenile eggs. So let's talk about the topic now. Since I've made you sit here and wait a second to find out what the topic is, what is the one tool that we all have, already have, that's going to be the most important tool in an SHDF situation. Alright, it's on your face, your nose, sense of smell guys, and why is the sense of smell so important in an SHDF situation, okay? So your sense of smell, and we're going to go with, with a couple of steps here. Number one is fire. You're going to be able to smell smoke, uh, so that's going to give you a heads up ahead of time where people are okay uh, before they know where you are like say so you're walking and I'm walking through the woods here and all of a sudden I catch a whiff of fire now I know I need to be careful because there's going to be other people out here someplace that have a fire going and you don't know if they're going to be hostile to you or not hostile and if you're just looking to avoid people altogether that sense of smell is going to be a big difference it can save your life okay so that is the one thing second thing is going to be you know, uh, you, when you, like with gunfire, obviously that's hearing, but you're going to smell, you know, the uh, smell that gunfire smoke and, and, and that type of thing as well. So again, uh, so you're actually using two senses there. You're using your sense of smell and your hearing. But if you smell, you know, that expended gunfire, you know, you might hear what direction the gunfire is coming from. But then you're, maybe if you smell that, you know, the gun smoke and stuff like that, you're going to know if you've ever been around a range or any, bound anybody shooting. It's a very distinctive smell. So it's going to let you know how close you are to that situation. Now, people with guns are either going to help or hurt you in an SHTF situation. So that's what you need to be aware of as well. So that sense of smell, again, could potentially save your life in that type of situation. The other thing that you're going to be smelling is dead bodies okay you're gonna be smelling those corpses of the dead and so why is that so important well if I'm walking along and all of a sudden I can smell somebody's dead around here and, you, and, and trust me if you guys have ever smelled a dead animal a dead human is gonna be a whole lot worse okay so um, especially if they had a couple days to ripen up you're gonna have that that unique distinct smell uh, and so that is going to be something that's going to be a really game changer again because why are those people dead and where they're at and where they're located and now you need to be on guard because if somebody's dead close by two couple things with that you may be able to go up and you may be able to uh, get some you know supplies off the dead bodies possibly also it could mean that there's danger very very close by because somebody's been killed by somebody you know that is in that area so those are going to be really really important things to think about so your sense of smell I mean we always talk about a dog sense of smell and how keen it is and it's going to be that early warning for you that that's that's a good thing as well but our own sense of smell is going to be really really something that's going to be very very important and it's it's something that we all take for granted we don't even think about but in that, in that SHTF situation that can be the difference of life and death um, if you're paying attention to your senses 
and uh, you know and those things are in and again that's gonna definitely be a game changer that sense of smell is something that you really really can take advantage of so I want you guys to think about that as well okay I'm gonna kick this around here so you guys can see still very very nice uh, we got a good breeze as you can see with the trees we're in the uh, low 70s today but yeah look at the trees just freaking rocking because uh, of the breeze it actually feels really really good so it's helping with the bugs to a degree <laughs> so but uh, actually very very comfortable and uh, the breeze feels fantastic so just a really really nice day here at the homestead um, I wanted to mention a couple things really quickly we are having our prepper get together August 17th so that's going to be a week from tomorrow time has gone by so freaking quick guys it's amazing so that's going to be August 17th it's going to be at Letchworth State Park in New York everybody is welcome to come uh, the only thing that I ask is if you could let me know that you're coming so I kind of have an idea of our head count and also um, that you would bring a dish to pass uh, and like I said I'm going to be supplying hot dogs and hamburgers and all the fixings that way so uh, you know that's already going to be provided for you guys so you don't have to worry about that but, uh, you know, like I said, it, sh it should be a really good time. It's going to be at Eddie's Pavilion, and it's E-D-D-Y-S Pavilion in Letchworth State Park, okay? The other thing I wanted to mention on my website, PrepperNurse1.com, we have the Prepper Nurse One community. So it's a great place. Now the bugs are coming after I said the breeze is helping with the bugs. Um, the Prepper Nurse One community is a great place to connect with like-minded people, okay? If you are looking to form a group, if you're looking to uh, talk with like-minded people it is a really good way to do that and uh, you know in your state or in your country so if you go into preppernurse1.com click on the preppernurse one community you have to register so it's very private in that aspect that people just can't come in and see what's going on you have to be registered okay and then you can go in we got great message boards on there. there's a lot of great information all the time so uh, you know just to give you a heads up if you were looking um, I had a lot of people had asked me how do I connect with people in my state or in my country so that's why we set up the prepper nurse one community for you guys and again that is totally free so I just wanted to mention that as well uh, anyway uh, my live stream tonight 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time I hope you guys are going to be there I already have it posted so if you want to go on you know and check and see uh, as far as the time to make sure get yourself a reminder and uh, we will be going at 8 o'clock tonight it should be a really good chat I think it's gonna be really really interesting a lot of great information okay so uh, definitely come over join us in the chat it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, I will see you guys all then so but uh, just give you an idea here we got all this freaking wood here and this whole center part is all filled with this type of wood as well and then this was just extra that was here I got to get that up on there as well but uh, so that's going to be more of our starting wood for the winter uh, we have all this wood here already this was all done guys I had this done by June so it's actually got more time to season since then you know since we got it I ended up splitting and cutting a bunch myself but then we also ended up buying a uh, six face cord so I got all this wood here and you can I'm, actually I'll go back through here a little bit and you can kind of see and then we have this wood over here as well so we got this and we have all of this so I know I have more than enough wood for the winter uh, it will get us through hopefully we don't have an early burning I mean we were actually still burning in the middle of June which was absolutely amazing to me that we were still burning wood this year I mean it was like once or twice in June we had to burn but uh, it was absolutely crazy that uh, that's the way it was this year but uh, the weather was just it was a very cold wet spring we were burning a lot later than we normally were we burned a lot in July or, I mean uh, May in May we did so anyway um, so that's uh, you know we're ready to go there now I wanted to show you so I have that's all like you know starter wood so I, kindling you're like where's your kindling stuff we normally have a lot of kindling stuff in here so what we're going to end up doing if you guys remember last year we cut down uh, nine trees through this area okay and so when I was bucking everything up and stuff like that what I did was took a lot of the branches and I'm going to walk over here so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about and I'm going to understand why I'm waiting on this uh, so we have all these branches basically just sitting here waiting okay so I'm gonna see how 
ready these are already. Okay, you see, look at that, guys. See how brittle that is already? It's really dried out. That, all this stuff here, this is all kindling, okay? All through here, we got it all through here, it's all through here. So what I'm going to end up doing is, as we get into the fall, I will come in and I will just start breaking all this up. We will load that all up, and that's going to be our, it's part of our fire starter. But the, why did I leave it out here, okay? So I stacked it all up so it's all on top of each other. Now, obviously, the weeds have grown up through there. But the reason that we did that is it dries out really, really good all summer long. Now, it was last fall that we cut these trees down, okay? And so now they're ready to go. Uh, I stacked them all up, like I said, this year. We'll just go in and break that up. I actually have in through here, guys, probably a couple years uh, worth of kindling to use for my fireplace. And I'll show you something else, too, real quick before we jump off of here. Uh, so we have that. And now when I was using my log splitter and cutting everything up, uh, splitting everything, because what I did is I bucked everything up out and through the center here. And then I had, if you guys remember, the stacks of wood that I had here, and I had stacks of wood here. So we split everything up in this area. So what I did also, and this is just another way of fire starter stuff, all these buckets that you see up here, okay, that's all that scrap, okay. That's all nice and dry because uh, it's underneath the building here. And that, again, more great fire starting wood. So always take advantage of everything that you have. Uh, you want to get that fire going, you know, if it's cold, if you don't have that going continuously, if it goes out, or if it's in the morning and if it's just hot coals. If you have just hot coals and you throw some of that dry wood like that on there, or that kindling that I showed you over here, that's a great way, man, that fire's going just like that. So, I've had plenty of experience and plenty of practice long before we moved to the homestead. Uh, grew up with a fireplace as a kid and my grandparents. And uh, when we were in uh, Greece, New York, I had an insert put into the fireplace, and that's how primarily we heated. I used to turn uh, the heat zone all the way down to 55, and we were basically in the family room all the time, and I burned wood constantly. And uh, our gas and electric bills at that point in time were next to nothing. So when we came out here, obviously I don't get a gas and electric bill anymore, which is awesome. So, you know, because we heat with wood and we have our own solar system, as you guys know, which is doing fantastic. So anyway, guys, I'm going to jump off here. I'm going to get this video up. I definitely want to hear your feedback on this topic. What do you think about the sense of smell being one of the most important things? Obviously, you got to be able to see, too, what's going on. But your senses, you know what I mean? Um, we can do a whole video on senses and all that type of stuff. But uh, that sense of smell is going to be a big lifesaver that a lot of people don't think about in an SHTF situation. So anyway, um, we're going to talk about, like I said, join us tonight for the live chat. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be on at 8 o'clock. Remember, guys, we are all in this together. That is important to remember. Also remember, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really, really important to tell those people every single day how you feel. Okay? Also remember, guys, STD. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only one that can stop you from getting there is yourself. Nobody else can do it. Okay? I hope everybody's having a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat tonight. Prepper Nurse 1, out.